gonna talk about swarm traps. Uh, I don't know a single beekeeper who does not get excited about catching swarms. I don't, I don't care how many hives I get, I always get excited about catching swarms. I always hang swarm traps, and swarm traps is something that I actually kind of run into by accident. I had, I've been doing this since around 2009, 2010, and I actually had a hive die in uh, the winter and being lazy, didn't want to clean the hive out, I took the hive and set it at the end of my house near my basement door and figured I'd clean it later. Never got around to it and one day whenever I was walking by the hive, I saw bees going in and out of it. I didn't think much of it, I figured they were just robbing it out. And went by another day and I saw more bees. I, when I cracked it open, I found out there was a hive that had moved in. Now the unique thing is that hive was sitting on the ground and it was turned with the entrance facing my house about four feet from the house which is if you do if you've done some research obviously you are if you're watching this video you'll know that that defies all the recommendations of swarm traps so you know just to get started uh, you can hang swarm traps wherever and however you want to uh, it doesn't matter north south east or west uh, eight foot high, six foot high, or 30 foot high, you'll catch swarms. But today we're on a wood line, and if you see this tree line down through here, that is one of the things that I like to look for when I'm hanging swarm traps. I like uh, wood lines, I like fence lines, and I'll try to do some videos of a couple different ones, me putting up. But I like wood lines and fence lines, or, or roadways, uh, those are just uh, markers that you can see really, really clearly from the sky, which is, would be the bee's view from the sky. Um, I prefer my traps to be facing south. Uh, like I say, I've, I've hung them every direction and I've caught swarms every direction, but if I have my preference, they will face south. And I also prefer my, bee, uh, my swarm traps to be 8 to 10 foot in the air. Uh, with a clear entrance, which is one of the main reasons I like tree lines and fence lines and roadways because they'll have a clear entrance, no limbs in front of them. Uh, eight to ten foot up is good because I don't like to carry more than a six foot step ladder whenever I'm hanging swarm traps. So if I'm hang, climbing a six foot step ladder, if I lean it up against a tree or open it up and I climb up it, um, I don't have to go all the way to the top run and I can easily hang a trap eight foot off the ground. So let's look at a few of the different styles, swarm traps that I've used or the, and the, the ones that I'm using now. All right, so <clears throat> this is the style that I'm gonna use this year. Uh, like I say, I've been doing this since 2009, 2010. When I first caught that swarm in a hive, I didn't really think anything about it. Uh, I was excited about it, but I didn't really think too much about it. Um, until it happened the next year. Same exact thing. Um, so what I started doing was, I didn't have a lot of hives at the time, so I couldn't hang hives in the trees. So I started hanging nuke boxes in the trees. And nuke boxes worked really well, but they generally only caught small swarms. And if you did catch a big swarm, they would generally leave within a week or so. They would run out of room. They'd draw those five frames out, run out of room, if you left them in there, a lot of people like to leave them in there a week, kind of let them start laying, get established. If you left them in there for a week, you'd go back to a hive with most of the bees gone, a bunch of brood laid up and queen cells in it. So that, was, that didn't work. Um, so I built some more hives and I started hanging hives. I used a little hanger, uh, kind of looks like, um, like what you'd put a mailbox on. It's a two before that was vertical. I had another two before that was horizontal and a 45 degree cross piece to brace it. Um, and I had it fixed uh, the right length and everything to hold my beehives. I had solid bottom boards and what I would do is I would wrap a strap around the hive in that hanger and I would run a screw or two up through the hanger into the bottom of the hive. And those work really well as well. But the problem is beehives are expensive um, you set a beehive up on a tree, you're sitting 75 to to $100 bill up there on the tree. And if you have them in places where people can see them, which is nice because then people can let you know there's bees in them, then those people can also come by and steal your beehives. So 
I needed a better way to catch swarms and I needed a cheaper way to catch swarms. So I started doing some research on the internet, um, probably, I don't know, 2012 or so, and I come across actual swarm traps and there's people who had plans. And if you look at some of my past swarm trap videos, especially the ones from last year, you'll see the style that I used last year. I used those for a couple years. They worked pretty well. Um, the problem was the tops. I'll put some pictures in the video right here. Okay, so these those were the swarm traps that I used. And the problem was the plans that I used, and I'll put the link in the description, they call for political signs or coroplast for the lids. Well, I didn't do that. I cheaped out and I used paneling. Well, the problem with the paneling was it just really deteriorated quickly. Um, and so in 2016, I had a lot of success with those plans, uh, but it was a dry year. In 2017, we had a very, very wet year, and I had an awful time with my swarm traps bowing. Still caught a lot of swarms, but not like I would like to. So I went to this, uh, this style. I got this style from Dr. Leo. I'll put a link to his uh, website in the description below. Um, I saw Dr. Leo in Rock Hill, South Carolina in the spring of 2017, and he's all natural treatment free guy, but he also has some good plans on catching swarm traps and some uh, different high plans, uh, Russian style hives and things like that. So. Uh, I got these plans for him. They're a little bit different than his. I had some three-quarter plywood and some seven-eighths plywood, uh, and I could not make mine exactly to his specifications, but I did the best that I could. Uh, and I, I think mine are just a little bit narrower and maybe not quite as tall. Um, but as you see, it's a, uh, it's a box. I'll put the, the plan description there for you so you can get all the dimensions. It's a box, the big thing is it has an actual top a telescoping lid with aluminum flashing. Now, when you take the lid off, if you're gonna put a telescoping lid on a swarm trap, then you're gonna have to have some type of inner cover. Well, I didn't wanna build an expensive inner cover, so I went with the uh, Mike Palmer, Kirk Webster variety inner cover, and I grabbed some old feed sacks from the chickens and cut those up and made feed sack inner covers. And inside this box, this form trap will actually hold six frames, which is a little bit bigger than the ones that I was using last year, uh, the 30 liter traps. Those form traps will only hold uh, five frames. And inside the swarm traps, I have just a frame of comb and just some empty frames. So let's talk about baiting. How do you bait a swarm trap? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to bait a swarm trap. Dr. Leo uh, recommends buying propolis or using your own propolis and rubbing propolis inside the hive to make it smell like bees. Um, a lot of people recommend lemongrass oil. Some people recommend swarm commander. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways. The old timers used to rub peach tree uh, leaves inside of them. Uh, the way I do it, I try to use old frames if I can because those old frames smell like bees. Um, I use one frame of old comb. Um, as you can see here, this is actually a frame. It's got a lot of drone comb on it, um, drone brood, and you know, I don't, didn't really want to melt it down. And uh, so, and, and I needed some bait for my swarm traps. So that's what I'm using here, just a frame of old comb. Um, I always put the comb in the middle. I, I tried putting it on the ends one time. When those swarms move in, they will go straight to the middle of the box and they will start building comb in the middle of the box. If you will put a piece of comb in the middle of the box, it gives them something to work, start working on immediately. The queen can start laying immediately and it gives them something to base the next pieces of comb off of. Um, I don't use starter strips in my, in my boxes. I basically just use old frames. Um, old frames that I don't want to clean up. Sometimes they're broken and they're not really in the best condition. But those are the best frames. Uh, you put those in the starters in the uh, in your uh, swarm traps because they've got the propolis on them. They smell like a beehive, so it's an attractant factor, and it gives me some use out of some old junk equipment that I normally wouldn't use. 
Um, <coughs> as far as bait goes, I've used uh, I've used everything you can think of. Uh, the best thing that I have found, if you're going to use lemongrass oil, is you take a Q-tip and you dip it in the lemongrass oil. Rub it across two or three, the tops of two or three frames inside the box. Dip the Q-tip back in the lemongrass oil. Make a circle around the entrance with the lemongrass oil. Dip the Q-tip back in the lemongrass oil a third time and just drop it into the bottom of the hive. That has worked the best for me as far as lemongrass oil. Now, I don't think you need food grade lemongrass oil like some people recommend. Um, I go to Amazon and buy the Sun Essentials brand and you can get a pretty good sized bottle for like 12 or 13 dollars and it works fine. I've used lemongrass oil for years, but last year um, I have another beekeeper who I helped get started catching swarm traps or catching swarms with swarm traps and he bought Swarm Commander and he made a believer out of me with Swarm Commander. Um, I swear I think you could spray Swarm Commander on a stick and throw it in your yard and bees would would cluster on that stick. It's that good. Um, I don't know what it is about it. So this year I bought some Swarm Commander and that's what I'm going to use this year. Is it required? No. Um, I, I, as far as swarms caught, you know, I had more swarm traps out uh, than he did, um, and I, I still caught plenty of swarms, um, but the, uh, the amount of attractiveness that swarm commander pulled to his boxes was just unbelievable, um, and he caught some really big swarms, so I'm going to go with the swarm commander, and, and swarm commander you can buy it in these little spray bottles, which is really, really nice. You don't have to keep up with Q-tips and all that. Um, you can just spray, I think it says two to three sprays on your inner cover. I'm going to put it two to three sprays on my top, on the top of my top bars because I don't have an inner cover. And you can put one to two sprays at the entrance. Very, very simple. As far as hanging swarm traps go, um, I've hung them several different ways as well. Some people put them on, uh, on top of their tree stands. Um, like I said, I bought, I built some uh, hangers at one time. And it was basically a two before that sat like this, and another two before that sat about like this, and then I had a 45 piece that went in between them, and those worked really, really well. On this vertical piece, I would put a, uh, I would put me a screw through here and a couple down here below, and it would it would hold very, very well, and then wrap it up. Um, I have also went to Lowe's, um, or you can go to Home Depot or any hardware store and bought the uh, closet shelving brackets, the little 90 degree angle metal brackets. I've used those, nailed those in the tree. The only problem I have with those is if you're gonna use those for a full size hive with a solid bottom, you probably need two of them because it's only about an inch or two wide and you've got a hive that is, if it's a swarm trap, it's probably anywhere from nine inches wide to a full size hive being 16 and it's hard to get that balance. Um, you really need a strap around the box and around the tree and just use that uh, bracket to support the weight. But you'll need to strap it really good. Uh, but, but they do work. Oh, and I've also had the, the stick that goes up the back. You'll see those on some of my old videos. Um, and those work really good too. The key there, don't nail them. Um, if you're gonna put a strip of wood up the back, <clears throat> that's a lot of weight on that swarm trap pulling forward and sometimes they will come loose uh, put your strip of wood on the back a heavy bead of glue and make sure you screw that strip to that box where it will not come off another thing with those if you use those don't put one nail um, <clears throat> or one screw through that strip into the tree because if you do when the wind blows it'll rock back and forth like a the second hand on a clock or one of the old grandfather clocks you need two screws. That way it will try to help prevent that thing from, from swinging back and forth. So those are some things that I've done in the past. They all work really, really great. But this year I have developed, or I haven't developed it, but this one I'm using is a French cleat style hanger. Um, I think they'll be a little bit easier as far as taking them off. Um, sometimes whenever you're setting those traps, it's kind of hard to reach up over the trap and, and run a screw. Um, through that little hanger when you're 10 foot up in the air. Um, 
and the little the little metal things you know sometimes it's hard if you're taking or the wooden hangers for that matter taking screws out of the bottom and unstrapping it it's kind of hard to do so the way this french cleat style hanger works is you i took a, a two before and if you take this two before and divide it into into four quadrants i just took out one of the quadrants um so it basically notched it out i'd run it on a on a table saw i run it flat ways and made a groove along the bottom then flipped it up and then made another groove and just cut this little notch out uh, took no time I got five eight foot two befores and made five um, uh, five sets of French cleats or ten sets of French cleats so you have this notch what you do is um, this opening will face the tree so say this is the tree or the fence post or the building or the light pole whatever you decide to put these on um, it would be here you put the uh, you anchor the French cleat the hanger part of the French cleat to the tree on this way as you can see on the hive the hive you have the gap towards the hive so it would be like this so if the hive was on this side and the tree was on this side you just set the uh, the hive on that French cleat and it will and it'll hold it in place um, that's what I've done you can make this out of some thinner wood but I've really tried to build these swarm traps to where they'll last me for a long time because they take time to make they take money to make and it's kind of bad whenever you you spend a lot of time making them and you only get to use them for one year so this is treated two befores and you could probably take some decking boards and do the same thing, but I wanted something strong, I wanted something big, and I wanted something that would last. And treated two before should last me for quite a while. So that's how I've made my French cleat hangers. So why do you, so you probably wanna know uh, what makes a bee choose a swarm trap? Well, there's a couple different things um, other than the bait. Uh, you have the comb in there, you know, that's nice. Uh, that's a good start. That's a head start to a hive. So that's a good lure. Um, the swarm commander pulls them in, but what makes them actually decide to move? Well, there's a couple key things that, that I've discovered over the years and um, that I've heard about and that I've studied about. And one of them is size. So when I talk about using uh, nuke boxes and I say that they catch small swarms, well, yeah, you can use a nuke box. There's a lot of people use nuke boxes to catch swarms, but they generally catch small swarms. Um, but then when you see people using 10 frame hives, yeah, people put a 10 frame hive in a box and they catch some small swarms too, but they also catch big swarms. So space is a big deal. Um, I think it's a lot bigger deal than people think. Dr. Leo talks about his ideal space, which is around, a, I think it, he says 40 to 60 liters. Um, which is bigger than the 30 liter traps that I used to use, which is why that I've went to his traps. I'm gonna try them out. Um, and I think he's right. Um, I think you need a cavity that is about the size of a 10 frame brood box. I think that's around the ideal size. You want that size. Um, if, so hanging a 10 frame hive would work um, or any swarm trap that is basically the size of a 10 frame brood chamber. I think that is ideal. So that's number one. Space is is number one. Um, another thing is no holes. Um, one thing that we learned last year when we had the disaster with our wet weather and all the wood bowing and cracking, if scout bees are checking out a box and it has cracks in it and holes in it, there's almost no chance that they're going to choose that swarm trap. Uh, they'll mess with it for a day or two and then they'll never move in. So that was one of my big reasons for uh, doing what I did this year. I, I did uh, Dr. Leo's hives on, when he tells you to take the, uh, the three pieces on the outside and put those together, um, I did that. And where those two were the bottom is screwed to the sides. I used two and a half inch deck screws and a heavy bead of glue and glued and screwed that as tight as I could so it will not come loose. Um, I rabbited the tops for my frame rest to set in. And then uh, whenever I put my face on, um, I, he calls for quarter inch plywood. I was able to get 
I believe half inch plywood for cheaper. It was either half inch or three eighths. One of the two I could get for cheaper. I bought that. I put a heavy bead of glue all the way around and I used 7 16 crown staples, um, one and a half inches long, and I put five, uh, five down this side, five down this side, and three across the bottom with that glue. Um, so I sealed those boxes as good as I could possibly seal them, and then I put two coats of exterior paint on the outside. Uh, so, you know, I try to tell people, if you are going to buy a house, and you walked into the house and there was a big hole in the roof and there was holes in the walls, would you buy that house? And the answer is absolutely not. You're not gonna buy a house that's got holes in the roof and holes in the walls because that will let in the elements. And the bees are the same way. They're looking for a secure place to live. They're looking for a secure place to go. And they're looking for a place that's big enough for the swarm. So if you have a little tiny swarm trap and there's a really big swarm hanging in a tree limb, they're not gonna move into that little box. Um, I've heard that the bees go in the swarm trap and they go around the outside and it's kinda like they measure the inside of the box to make sure that it's big enough. Um, so, you know, kinda like us, if you've got uh, five kids and, uh, and, and a wife and two dogs, you're not gonna buy a two bedroom, two bathroom house. You're gonna have to have a bigger house. Um, you're gonna use what you what you can so um, if there's nothing else out there available then yeah I'm sure that the bees will will go in your little nuke box but uh, like I mentioned earlier within a week or so they'll fill that box out and they're gone so you're not going to keep them very long um, they need a good secure airtight place with no holes no daylight coming through and they also need uh, they need enough space a, a big enough space for the for the box. So those are a few pointers that'll that'll help you along the way um, and help make your swarm catches a lot more successful. Okay, so here's the tree that I've chose. It's a pretty straight tree. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've already mentioned that I like my hives facing south. I want them eight to ten foot up in the air. One of the things that you have to look for that that I'm particular about is a straight tree you really need a straight tree another key to swarm traps and to making this thing successful and enjoyable is having a straight tree well why is that well bees generally use gravity to draw their combs down because they cluster and they hang on on the bottom of that frame and they draw their comb down if your box is setting out of plumb then what happens is when they hang and cluster they'll draw the comb from say frame three to frame two and from frame four to frame three and it creates a mess and so then when you open the swarm trap up and to get that swarm out that you're so excited about you end up with a nightmare you end up with combs that are all crossed up and it's or you know if you don't put your piece of comb in the center then they start building their combs kind of off center on the frame so if you got the frame on the bottom uh, the comb won't be centered in, in that frame. It'll be offset, so it'll be sticking out on one side. And so that just uh, makes for a nightmare. So you need a straight tree. You need a tree that, that when you mount that hive to, it it is plumb or close to plumb. And you can take some pieces of wood or some sticks. I do that a lot. Dig around the bottom of the tree, find some sticks, and I'll pull the bottom of the uh, swarm trap out and shove a stick under the bottom of it. Um, but this is a good straight tree, it's tall. Uh, this direction towards the field is the, the south direction, so we're gonna have it facing south. And I am six foot tall, and I want the entrance to be up above this knot here. So if I'm six foot tall and the entrance is up here above this knot, it should be close to eight foot up in the air. All right, so I've made a, uh, made a mark on the tree here. So I've got my French cleat, as you can see. Here's the, here's the notch, I'm gonna have it facing the tree. And I've got some screws here, some three inch exterior, exterior deck screws. I'm gonna screw this to the tree first here.
Now, like I said, you want this box to be plumb, but you also want it to be level. So it needs to be plumb this way, but it also needs to be level on the side to side direction too. So in order to get it level, I'm gonna check this hanger with the level. So that's three, three, three inch screws <coughs> through the bottom of this thing. And it's on there. It's on there pretty good. It'll hold a swarm trap. All right, so let's bait the swarm trap here. Uh, I told you guys I'm going with Swarm Commander this year. So here's my bottle of Swarm Commander. We're gonna give it one, two sprays on the top bars and that's it. More is not better when it comes to lure, okay? More is a turnoff. So do what the instructions say or do what I said with the uh, Q-tip. Don't just pour it in. Now that we got that done, we got it baited on the inside, we're gonna put our feed sack on top. Put our lid on top of that. Now one thing that you'll see that I didn't mention earlier is I got a two before block right here. The reason that I have that is uh, these boxes that I built are big and they're heavy. And so when you hang this swarm trap by this French cleat, this bottom is gonna have a tendency to pull back towards the tree. So by putting this uh, two before block here, it's the same width as this cleat here. It'll hold, um, it'll hold this trap off the tree plumb and give this bottom a little bit more support and not be so much strain on my French cleat, help it last a little bit longer. All right, let's hang it up. <clears throat> All right, so if you look at the swarm trap from this angle, it's it's pretty good and plumb. Um, French cleat isn't wanting to seat as well as I'd like for it to, and it's kind of hard to see, but on this tree, there's a little bit of a bow, and up towards the tree, um, up towards the top of the swarm trap, it's kind of bowing out, the tree is, and that's kind of preventing the, uh, the French cleat from sitting down, but it's still in there pretty solid. And here's the view from out front. As you can see, the trap is level, and that's what we're looking for. Now, since I'm using a, uh, a telescoping lid and not a lid like my old plans, where the lid is actually nailed down, this is a telescoping lid so it can blow off. The last thing I do is I use a ratchet strap to wrap a strap around the, the trap to hold the lid on. I used to put a rock on top of the lid, but that's kind of hard to do and find. And then I always, I'm always afraid somebody's gonna be down here messing around near the trap and the rock's gonna fall off and hit them in the head, which is, would not be good. So I just use ratchet straps.
any excessive strap, uh, I just tie it on the on the back here. And the last thing you do before you leave the swarm trap, you got to spray your bait or your lure on the entrance. All right, so here's another hive uh, that I've got hung up, bait hive, swarm trap, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one is in a persimmon tree. And as you can see, this one I've got a strap around it. And as I mentioned before, um, let's see if I can get it to focus here. Sometimes I use these little uh, brackets that you use to put closet shelving in with. And I've just got that nailed to the tree. I've got the swarm trap sitting, whoop, fell in a hole. Got that swarm trap sitting uh, on top of that box so that supports the weight. And then I've just got a strap wrapped around the tree and around the swarm trap to actually hold it in place keep it pulled tight. Now the reason why you don't see a strap around to hold the top on is if you look on the top there is a limb that I've cut off a year or two ago and it is actually right above that top and I've kind of got the box wedged between the closet shelving bracket hanger and that limb so the uh, the lid cannot blow off the trap and it is securely on there. Now as far as location go, let's look at the location of this swarm trap. So the location of this swarm trap is right on a roadway. It's in my front yard. Um, you can see little pile of persimmon trees there and the swarm traps hanging in the persimmons. Right, right up that ditch line is my driveway and this is the, the road that I live on. So like I said earlier, bees, um, I believe and I've heard, you know, read research that that they do follow uh, landmarks, big landmarks. So they'll follow tree lines and they follow roadways and power lines and um, and fence rows and, and things like that. So if that's true, then placing swarm traps on those areas, those big key landmarks, so will make it easy uh, for them to find because they'll be using those uh, landmarks as travel corridors and um, orientation places to find their way back home and as they're flying through there they're going to smell your swarm commander and if if a swarm is out there in a tree and they're sending scouts out to find a place to go and they're flying those uh, those flightways um, the tree lines and all that stuff then as they're flying through there scouting for places they're going to find your they're going to smell that swarm commander they're going to go in there and check out your box and you're going to catch a swarm Alright, so in my video, uh, Swarm and Swarm Trap late summer, um, I had a Swarm Trap in this maple tree right here. And when I uh, found this Swarm, it was late summer. I was actually in the process of moving most of my bees back here to the farm instead of taking them away from the farm to mating yards like I normally do. So I never moved this swarm, uh, this swarm. I just basically took the swarm trap down, put them right here at the bottom of the tree, and I left them there. And uh, I did a video of that. You can go back and look at the video. Hive's still alive. They're doing okay. Not the strongest box I've got, but it's a box of bees nonetheless. So one of the places I like to set swarm traps is a place where I've caught swarms before. Uh, quite frankly that's probably the best place to hang swarms or hang swarm traps or bait hives uh, if you've caught uh, swarms there before then generally you will catch them there again a lot of times if I hang a bait hive or a swarm trap whatever you want to call it um, generally if I hang a, a swarm trap in a spot and I catch an early swarm I will take that uh, swarm trap down and move that hive over the next day i will come back and i will hang another swarm trap in the exact same spot and a lot of times i will catch another swarm in the same tree um, i don't want to put the swarm trap in this exact tree because i still have this hive here and i don't know when i'm going to move it so i'm just going to go right down there about i don't know 20 feet maybe 30 feet 
and I'm going to put my swarm trap in that persimmon tree. Now I'll go over a little bit more of what you do um, after you catch swarm traps later on. Uh, I'll just wait until we actually catch one then I'll do a video on that. So there it is, doesn't take very long. We got it level that way. One thing I have noticed is my French cleats are not working exactly like I wanted them to. Uh, you can see kind of how they're not locking in. It's locked in enough to hold it. Um, I may have to go back to the drawing board on that. One thing that I have done though to uh, to give it a little bit of added support is whenever I take the strap over the top of the swarm trap I go actually around the tree and then whenever I ratchet that around the tree it uh, gives a little bit more support kind of pulls that swarm trap tight against the tree pulls the swarm trap tight against the tree and helps lock it in place that one I've got hooked around a knot so I will uh, I will adjust that but that swarm trap's not going anywhere. It's got, well, like I've told you before, three three-inch screws holding that bottom two before on. It's treated. And uh, the two two befores, they're, they're locked together. This would probably be easier if I was putting it on a building or something flat, but when you're working with trees and mother nature, it don't always go the way you want it to. All right, very windy again. Uh, if you watched my video last year, Kelton caught his first swarm. I think that's the title of it. Uh, this is the tree right here. This is where we caught that swarm. That's where I'm gonna hang a swarm trap. Um, just for the record, the swarm that Kelton caught last year is still alive. I made a split from it yesterday, which is, would have been March 27th. So it's doing really, really well. If you look, we're on a fence road. So like I said, uh, I, got a, I got one of my pastures is right here to my right. It's a nine acre pasture. To my left is about a 20 acre. It's winter wheat right now, but it's soybeans in the summer. So I got a big field on the left, a big field on the right, and about a 900 to 1,000 foot long fence that runs between the two.
turns so you have a power line so we not only have fence roads dividing two big fields we also have a power line running through and so uh, those are big landmarks that bees are going to use for orientation to figure out where they're going So remember, like I said, I'm six foot tall. How's that for uh, for swarm trap height? That's just like I hung it last year. Entrance is shoulder high, called a great swarm. So, you know, take everything you say with a grain of salt. If you don't want to get up on a ladder, don't get up on a ladder. You can hang them low. Bees will still move in them. My first two swarms I caught were trap. Well, they weren't traps, they were hives sitting on the ground. So, uh, this will work. And that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the description below. I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Uh, I've went over uh, how I come about swarm traps, just stumbling across it by being too lazy to clean my own hives. Uh, how I started using nukes, moving to full-size hives. Then I went to the 30-liter trap. Again, uh, plans are in the description. Wonderful trap, great trap. You can make tons of those traps with, uh, with plywood. I just I would make sure I put a good lid on them uh, and then on to Dr. Leo's traps which is I'm trying this year one thing that I didn't go over though is the entrance hole uh, the entrance hole on the traps from the 30 liter trap are inch and a quarter uh, Dr. Leo uses a slit I believe it's a half inch by two inches you can uh, look at that um, I like Dr. Leo's uh, entrance a lot better the uh, 30 liter trap they talk about the inch and a quarter hole the problem being that birds will fly in through it and you have to shoot a staple up through it or uh, staple a piece of wire across it to keep the birds out because they will get in it um, but Locker Leo uses the slit I was just not feeling like I wanted to put the dado blades on the table saw so what I'm trying to do this year it's another one of my exper uh, experiments is I'm just using a three quarter inch hole and the reason why one, I don't think birds will be able to get in a three-quarter inch hole. And two, it's just a lot smaller hole. And I feel like the bees will find that more secure. Now, some people disagree with that. Some people will say that they feel, they'll feel like there's not enough room for them to go in and out of. But I have seen uh, one of the, the last cutout or trap outs that I did uh, was in a center block garage. And basically, there was a small... Uh, piece of the bed joint of a center block missing and the bees were going in and out of that bed joint and the bed joint on a block is not very big um, I've also seen bees going in the roofs of houses under a shingle that was uh, the, a nail 
a, a roofing nail had just pushed the shingle up just enough where the bees could slide through there. Um, I've seen them go through little, uh, you know, uh, where a pipe or for ele uh, electronics or plumbing go into a building and they didn't get it all the way sealed up with great stuff foam or silicone. I've seen them go through that. So me personally, I don't think the bees are gonna really care uh, whether or not that hole is an inch and a quarter or three quarters. If you look at my uh, my last swarm trap video, it was a, a swarm, swarm in a swarm trap late summer. And I talk about a swarm in July, let it fly and we don't do that around here. Well. If you look on that one, uh, there was something on the on the entrance, and I couldn't figure out what it was. And basically, that inch and a three-quarter hole, the bees had just propolized it almost completely shut. They had, you know, just enough room for maybe two or three bees to get through, and that was it. So um, that's one of the things I know I forgot to mention, and I mentioned it here. Entrance hole, I'm using a three-quarter. I think Dr. Leo uses a half an inch wide by two inches, or it's a half inch tall by two inches long. Um, hole that's what he likes uh, the old traps that I use inch and inch and a quarter that's what that's what they like I'm gonna try three quarter inches but uh if you have any questions like I say comments in the put some comments below and I'll do the best I can to answer them and good luck